Hello students, our today's topic is Cold Rush Law and its applications from class plus 2 chemistry, chapter electrochemistry. So let's study Cold Rush Law of independent migration of ions. At infinite dilution, when the dissociation is complete, each ion makes a definite contribution towards the molar conductivity of the electrolyte, irrespective of the nature of the other ion with which it is associated. This means that the molar conductivity at infinite dilution for a given salt can be expressed as the sum of the individual contributions from the ions of the electrolyte, each multiplied by the number of respective ions present in the formula unit of electrolyte. For example, for sodium chloride, as the formula of sodium chloride is NaCl, so that means the lambda m0 for NaCl, that is the molar conductance at infinite dilution or at zero concentration for NaCl, it is equal to the sum of the individual contributions of the ions of the electrolyte, that is lambda m0 for Na positive ions plus lambda m0 for Cl negative ions because in sodium chloride in solution sodium chloride gave one Na positive and one Cl negative ion. So the sum of these two ions contribute to the total molar conductance of sodium chloride. Similarly, for HCl, lambda M0 for HCl is equal to the sum of lambda M0 for H positive ions and lambda M0 for Cl negative ions. For sodium sulfate, here in the formula of sodium sulfate, two Na positive ions are there. So that means lambda M0 for sodium sulfate is equal to twice the lambda M0 for sodium ions plus lambda m0 for sulfate ions. For MgCl2 that is magnesium chloride here two Cl negative ions are there. So that means lambda m0 for MgCl2 is equal to lambda m0 for Mg2 positive ions plus twice the molar conductance at of chloride ions. And last is for acetic acid, lambda M0 for acetic acid is equal to lambda M0 for H positive ion plus lambda M0 for acetate ions. So let's study applications of Cold Rush's law. Some important applications are first is calculation of molar conductance at infinite dilution for weak electrolytes. As we have discussed in our previous lecture that weak electrolytes does not dissociate completely even at very low concentration or that is highly dilute solutions. So experimentally we cannot determine molar conductance at infinite dilution by extrapolation of lambda m versus under root c graph. But by using Cold Rush's law we can determine molar conductance of weak electrolytes at infinite dilution lambda m0 or lambda m infinity which cannot be determined experimentally. Let's calculate the lambda m0 for acetic acid. According to Cold Rush's law, the molar conductance at infinite dilution for acetic acid is equal to the sum of molar conductance of H positive ion and of acetate ion. Let it be equation number 1. This equation can be obtained by knowing the molar conductance at infinite dilution for some strong electrolytes. For example, 
consider strong electrolytes like KCl, HCl and potassium acetate experimentally. So according to Kohlrausch's law, the total molar conductance at infinite dilution for these strong electrolytes will be lambda M0 for KCl is equal to lambda naught K positive ion plus lambda naught for Cl negative ion. Similarly, lambda M0 for HCl is equal to lambda naught for H positive ion plus lambda naught for Cl negative ion. Let it be equation number third. And the molar conductance at infinite dilution for potassium acetate is equal to lambda naught for K positive ion plus lambda naught for acetate ion. Let it be equation number fourth. So by operating these three equations of strong electrolytes, second, third and fourth, we can easily obtain our required acetic acid molar conductance. So it is clear that if we add the molar conductance of potassium acetate and HCl and subtract the molar conductance of KCl from it, we can easily obtain lambda naught for acetic acid as lambda naught K positive and lambda naught Cl negative cancels out. So we have only lambda naught for acetate ion plus lambda naught for H positive ion which contributes to the total molar conductance at infinite dilution for the acetic acid molecule. So which is the required product. So that means Kohlrausch law can be useful for calculating the molar conductance at infinite dilution or at zero concentration for weak electrolytes which cannot be determined experimentally. Let's understand this application by doing some numerical problems. So first is calculate the molar conductivity at infinite dilution of silver chloride from the following data. We have given lambda m0 for silver nitrate that is equal to 13.34 Simon meter square per mole. Lambda m0 for KCl is 14.99 Simon meter square per mole and lambda m0 for potassium nitrate it is equal to 14.49 Simon meter square per mole. So these three values are given to us. So the molar conductivity at infinite dilution for silver chloride can be calculated as. So first of all think how we can get the lambda m0 for AgCl. So let me help you that if we add the lambda m0 for silver nitrate and lambda m0 for KCl and subtracting the value of lambda m0 for potassium nitrate from it we can easily get the lambda m0 for AgCl. So first we dissociate the three strong electrolytes into their ions as here plus lambda naught nitrate ion and plus lambda naught for K positive ion cancels out with their negative lambda naught values. So we left with lambda naught for Ag positive plus lambda naught for Cl negative. So which is our required product. So as we operate the lambda naught values in the same way add the lambda m naught values which are given to us for silver nitrate and KCl 
that is 13.34 plus 14.99 and subtracting the value of lambda m0 for kno3 that is minus 14.49 the value of molar conductance at infinite dilution for agcl comes out to be 13.84 simon meter square per mole so let's do some other numerical calculate the molar conductivity at infinite dilution for calcium chloride and magnesium sulfate from the following data a lambda naught for calcium it is equal to 119.0 lambda m naught for cl negative it is 76.3 lambda naught for magnesium ions it is equal to 106.0 and lambda naught for sulfate ion is given 160.0 all in simon centimeter square per mole so according to kolrash's law lambda m naught for calcium chloride is equal to the sum of lambda naught for calcium ion and twice the lambda m naught for chloride ion because in the formula of calcium chloride two chloride ions are there so first of all always remember multiply the lambda naught for chloride value by 2 and then add it to lambda naught for calcium ion so this gives the required answer 271.6 simon centimeter square per mole the other lambda m naught for magnesium sulfate you can find by yourself second application of kolrash law is calculation of degree of dissociation of weak electrolyte as molar conductance depends upon the number of ions produced which in turn depend upon the degree of dissociation so higher the degree of dissociation larger is the molar conductance and at infinite dilution the degree of dissociation becomes 1 that is unity thus the degree of dissociation alpha it is equal to lambda m c upon lambda m not where lambda m c is the molar conductance at particular concentration and lambda m zero is the molar conductance at zero concentration or at infinite dilution it can also be write as lambda m in infinity which can be obtained by using kolrash's law our third application is calculation of dissociation constant of weak electrolytes we have learned in previous class that dissociation constant capital k of weak electrolyte can be given as dissociation constant capital k is equal to c alpha square upon 1 minus alpha where c is the concentration and alpha is the degree of dissociation substituting the value of alpha in the above relation the dissociation constant k for weak electrolytes can be easily calculated the last application of kolrash law is the calculation of solubility of sparingly soluble salts the salts such as silver chloride barium sulfate lead sulfate etc are sparingly soluble salts as they dissolve very little thus their solutions are considered as infinitely dilute in their saturated solution their concentration is equal to their solubility thus by measuring specific conductance kappa and molar conductance of such solutions solubility can be easily determined lambda m not is equal to kappa in 2000 divided by molarity this we have done in our previous lectures that is equal to kappa in 2000 divided by solubility so the solubility is equal to kappa in 2000 divided by lambda m not where lambda m not can be calculated by applying kolrash's law so next is one important note for you that is transport number 
the fraction of total current carried by an ion is called its transport number. So the transport number of cation T positive is equal to current carried by cation divided by total current and the transport number of anion T negative is equal to current carried by anion over total current. So if there is only one cation and one anion in an electrolyte then T plus plus T negative that is equal to unity that is 1. Let's understand the last three applications by doing a numerical problem. The conductivity of 0.001028 mole per liter acetic acid is 4.95 into 10 to the power minus 5 simon uh, per centimeter. Calculate its dissociation constant if lambda m naught for acetic acid is 390.5 simon centimeter square per mole. So in this numerical conductivity kappa that is given to us which is 4.95 into 10 to the power minus 5 simon per centimeter and molarity of the electrolyte is 0 0.001028 molar. So first of all we have to calculate the molar conductivity lambda which is equal to kappa into 1000 divided by molarity. So that means 4.95 into 10 to the power minus 5 into 1000 divided by molarity that is 0 0.001028 which comes out to be 48.151 simon centimeter square per mole. As lambda m0 for acetic acid is also given to us in the numerical statement. So by taking the ratio of these two molar conductivities we can easily calculate the degree of dissociation which is equal to alpha is equal to lambda m c upon lambda m0. Lambda m0 for acetic acid is given 390.5 simon centimeter square per mole. Therefore alpha is equal to 48.151 divided by 390.5. So it comes out to be 0 0.1233. So as the acetic acid dissociates as CH3COOH dissociates into acetate ion plus H positive ion. So the initial concentration of acetic acid is C and of products is 0. And at equilibrium the concentration of acetic acid becomes C1 minus alpha and after dissociation the concentration of the ions becomes C alpha for acetate ion and C alpha for H positive ions. So as the dissociation constant is the ratio of product of molar concentration of products to the molar concentration of reactants. So dissociation constant K is equal to C alpha into C alpha divided by C1 minus alpha which comes out to be C alpha square upon 1 minus alpha. So by putting the values of alpha and concentration the dissociation constant comes out to be 1.78 into 10 to the power minus 5. Hope you all are understanding the topic properly and practicing the numerical problems also. So if you like my videos, please subscribe my channel and click the bell icon for further updates. Thanks for watching.